Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifies Tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at the eclectic paradigm or the OLI framework. Now one of the ways a company can grow is to expand their business overseas. Okay, And there can be certain motivations for companies to do so. There can be an advantage in terms of strategic resources like cheaper manpower, availability of technology, etc., new customers or brand value improvement. So there can be various advantages. Now manufacturing com companies, uh, for instance, can look at efficient manufacturing, cheaper raw materials, economies of scale, etc. Now whatever be the incentive for expansion, uh, companies will need to strategically plan their entry into a foreign country. And one of the ways for companies to expand overseas is foreign direct investment, FDI. Now let's look at what an FDI is because the concept of FDI is, is relevant in studying the OLI framework. Now FDI is a direct long-term investment in business operations in a foreign country. A country, a company engaging in FDI becomes a multinational corporation, MNC, as it now operates in multiple countries. FDI can actually take two forms, greenfield investments and mergers and acquisitions. Now, greenfield investments uh, is a route in which a company establishes uh, its presence from the ground up in the foreign country. So they actually set up everything they do in their home country from scratch and start operating so they set up their factories they they get raw materials they uh, they essentially set everything up from the ground up and do exactly what they do in the foreign in, in their home country mergers and acquisitions uh, is, a, is a way in which a company merges with or acquires an existing foreign company okay now it's easy to understand why more more MNCs would actually choose mergers or greenfield investments because greenfield investments uh, takes a lot of investments, a lot of work in setting everything up. Now, what is the eclectic paradigm? The eclectic paradigm is a method for analyzing the attractiveness of making a foreign direct investment. Now, according to the eclectic paradigm, uh, for a company to engage in FDIs, it, it needs to attain certain advantages the the paradigm is also called the oli paradigm or the oli framework as oli actually stands for the three advantages the company needs to derive when it goes into fdi okay the advantages are ownership location and internalization oli now on a on a lighter note i actually don't need to uh, to give you a, a way to actually remember this uh, paradigm uh, is in an easy way because OLI actually stands for OLI so it can be called the OLI framework and uh, OLI is quite a popular name so anyway so well uh, hello to all the OLIs out there who are viewing this video uh, and if all of these three advantages are present the company can actually engage in FDIs if one or more of these advantages are absent the company should look at other ways to venture overseas. Okay, now for engaging in FDIs in a specific country uh, or, a, or a specific market overseas, companies actually need to look at all of these three factors in reference to that country or market in question. Okay, and now let us let us actually understand all of this by looking at each advantage or factor in detail now the first factor is ownership now ownership refers uh, to a resource that the company owns that gives it a competitive advantage in the foreign market now this resource that the company possesses needs to be valuable rare and hard to imitate so if you know what I mean it's it's essentially direct it essentially directs towards the company having a USP to be able to exploit a gap in the foreign market okay now there can be certain liabilities and disadvantages for companies venturing overseas as you'd understand now these can include foreign language restrictions cultural restrictions uh, 
and and a certain lack of understanding of the customer needs of that foreign market to ensure that the company balances some of these disadvantages there can be some questions the company uh, management can ask themselves and that would be do do they actually have a strong brand name with a great reputation does the company have that brand power do they actually have unique technological capabilities can they actually achieve economies of scale by venturing overseas if the answer to these questions is yes the company has a fair chance of overcoming some of the the likely disadvantages or liabilities if the answer to multiple questions here is no then the company actually needs to revisit its strategy to enter this market this particular market it can venture into other markets but this is a location specific framework uh, Oh well, and the next factor is location. Uh, location is an obvious factor that can provide a considerable competitive advantage to a parent company. Uh, for a lot of obvious reasons, location factors can be purely geographical, like the proximity to a large potential customer base. And for certain types of companies, maybe, you know, if you can think of freight companies, uh, proximity to uh, a large body of water like an ocean etc or it can refer to other factors like availability of cheaper raw materials low cost skilled labor low rental tax and tax rates etc companies need to ask themselves if any of these location advantages are present in the foreign market that they've chosen if the answer isn't a resounding yes then the company might still choose to enter the market but they can actually retain certain manufacturing capabilities in their home country and simply export overseas that that can be an option uh, which can actually be more economical and advantageous uh, the next factor is internalization now this factor refers to the prospect of deriving an advantage out of outsourcing some of the value chain activities performed by the company so some of the activities are outsourced not all of it uh, it could often be advantageous for for to outsource certain functions in the value chain in the foreign market owing to various factors like cost savings local market knowledge or simply because the management wants to focus on other activities like marketing or diversification etc so there can be various reason reasons why it it, it probably is cost effective and advantageous to to outsource only certain elements certain aspects certain functions in the value chain to uh, to another market overseas if there exists an advantage the company can profit from from engaging in fdis keeping control of the decision making and outsourcing only certain functions by by going into joint ventures mergers acquisitions etc if there isn't a clear advantage the company can still choose to adopt uh, adopt models like like licensing for instance or franchising to actually retain control and still engage with the foreign market in some way okay now for example uh, the company can simply use its existing products and designs uh, retain manufacturing and simply license a foreign company just to distribute some of its products or all of its products and thereby accept some liability in the process okay now it's pretty simple, but let's look at uh, the model, uh, the framework graphically to understand uh, and, and get some more clarity. Now, a company uh, considering foreign investments can, can look at the three factors, which are ownership, location and internalization. And if the answer to, to ownership is yes, then can go on to, uh, to observing the next factor. And if it's no, then it should ideally remain domestic. And the next factor is location and uh, if the location factors are satisfied then uh, it can proceed to the next factor if not the company can consider to actually export from the whole com home country into the, the the target they originally chose to go into FDIs in. and the next factor internalization if uh, the factors are satisfied then uh, the uh, the company can actually continue with it uh, with its pursuit of uh, of foreign direct investment if the answer here is no then the, the company should ideally be considering another option like licensing or perhaps franchising etc 
Okay, so that was uh, an overall uh, look at the OLI framework, the OLI paradigm, uh, the eclectic paradigm. I hope this uh, tutorial was useful for you. And as always, like this content, support this channel, support this tutorial and other tutorials. Uh, take a look at what we've got out here and uh, uh, you could actually benefit from a lot of other topics that have been covered in this channel. Uh, keep liking and supporting us on Facebook as well. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.